Okay, so I'm going to get started. This is a, a, a two-parter, and I think one of the things that I've been uh, talking with Beth about and with a few others, um, we've kind of looked at a lot of different tools that do some fancy things recently. Um, but what I really want to look at at the moment is that organization section. Uh, I want to be looking at some of the tools that we can have out there that can both support our students with preparation for portfolios, coursework, exams, um, and also some tools that may be useful for us as practitioners. Uh, a number of you may be doing additional qualifications. Uh, you may just need some support with your planning and preparation. So what I'm gonna be looking at tonight is I'm gonna be going through a range of tools. Uh, I'm gonna be going through one, which is called Mendeley, massive uh, tool that I've been using for a number of years, which I found has really helped organize my material. Uh, then we're gonna be looking at OneNote, again, another fantastic collaboration tool uh, and, and great for organization of different software. And then what I've tried to do is, because not all of you use uh, Microsoft products, I've been looking at the Google products as well that run alongside it. And for that, I'm gonna be looking at Google Keep, and then we're going to be looking at Microsoft Lists and then finishing off with Trello, uh, which is a, a third party, but does a lot of the organization uh, elements that we've discussed so far. For those that have, this is their first time to one of these webinar series, um, what I tend to do is I tend to walk and talk through the different software and the different bits and pieces. However, if you have any questions or queries at any point, uh, please drop it in the chat box, raise a hand, I'm more than happy to pause, go back through, or if you have a question as to, could it do this? Would it be able to do this? I'd be more than happy to guide and support you through that. Uh, and if I'm unable to answer it right here and now, I'll get back to you with an email later on. So that's much appreciated. Um, apologies for my voice for those that have walked in. Uh, I will be taking water throughout, so. Hopefully it won't be so bad. I said to Beth, I said, this will be my Bonnie Tyler night. We'll see how it goes. Now, the first software I want to look at is one called Mendeley. Now, Mendeley.com is a free online tool that you can sign up for. And effectively, if I go here, what it is, is a library tool that we can use for organizing vast amounts of documents journal articles, policies, procedures, lots of different bits and pieces in a really nice, neat fashion. Now, this is especially beneficial for someone like myself because what I'll find is I'll, I'll find an article or I'll find a, a PDF or a document and they end up in like my downloads file or my documents file or my desktop. They're all over the place. And there's always that time where I'm thinking, where did I put that? Now, with something like Mendeley, what it does is it auto stores it for you. It organizes it. And I'm going to guide you through how that works. So let's just find a document to start with. So if I just say I want to find a document on, ooh, let's find uh, motivation in the classroom. Now, my top tip is always to put PDF at the end of any search. That way, it separates all your articles down, so you just get certain articles that you want. It could be motivation in the classroom, it could be activities, it could be a workbook, but we're looking for a PDF in its simpler form. It will also take Word files, websites, the lot. So let's say I found this document here. <clears throat> now, generally, when I go to save it, I can, if I'm a very clever person, when I come to download it, store it into a certain file that I have here. So I'm just going to save it. But more than likely in two, three days, I may forget where the devil I put it. But once I've stored it, what I can do now is I can go straight to my downloads and I can drag and drop that file into Mendeley. Now, as you can see, what that's done is it's taken the file, it's given me the author, the year, and it's saved it into this library. What I can do then is I can just double click on it in my library and I'll be able to read it. Now, the benefit of this is quite a few different features. So like Mendeley, it's a document 
uh, it's a tool that you can access not just on your computer. You can download the app for your iPad. You can download the app for an Android or even a mobile phone device. And anything I store on one, it automatically gets shared servers to store all of your files. So though I've put this onto my computer that I'm sat on right now, tomorrow morning, I could get my phone and I could read it on there as well. So straight away, it's a great way of sharing a document across multiple devices all at once, meaning that you've got instant access for it. And this is all done through the Mendeley login that you have. Now, with this document, let's uh, get rid of that one there. This is the document I've just downloaded. We've got a number of different features that Mendeley allows us to do. So it's not just for reading, like an e-reader, but what we can do is we can also highlight and make notes on this document. So let's say, for example, I've been reading it and there's something that I think, oh, that'd be quite good for uh, a class or a paper I'm writing or a piece of research I'm doing. So I can, firstly, I've got this highlighter tool up here. So I can highlight text. I'm just gonna highlight a large chunk of text and that will stay there. Again, any alterations I do on this, it will do on my other devices that I log in with. And again, vice versa, if I highlight something while reading it on my tablet, it will come up the same on my other documents. So it's a great way. Now, what you've also got, I've highlighted this for some reason. So what I'm going to do now is I can also add notes. So let's say, for example, I get here and go, OK, maybe I want to put on here, uh, this would be uh, an activity to discuss with students. There we go. So I can add these notes to documents as I go through. And as you can see there, it's instantly saved, synced across all of my devices. And as I do more and more of these notes alongside, we're back to info on the right hand side. And I can see any of the annotations I've made on that document. This is great because if you've got lots of them, I was reading through a policy the other day, I was making some comments on it. I could just click annotations. And when I click on it, it will take me straight to that page and where that annotation is. Really useful. I was reading the new safeguarding policy and I made a few things and I forgot where they were because it was quite a big document. But I could read my annotations, click on it, take me directly to it. Really useful tool. What you've also got is notebook. So in the notebook section, I can just write long passages. So if I want to write a section, say I'm summarizing a piece of text, I can add it in my notebook comments. And it's always saved with that one article or policy or procedure that I've got in there. So it's a lovely little document. Now, under the info section, like I said, <laughs> pardon me, I've just dragged and dropped in that PDF. And it started to put little elements that it thinks. It goes, okay, this is quite a good little element on here. But I can add other things. I can assign it to a collection, which we're going to look at later on. I can also add tags. So say, for example, I want to tag this one specifically as an education document, or maybe it's a policy document, or it fits with a history module I'm teaching, or an English module. I can add these tags. These are particularly useful when we're looking for filtering and searching at a later stage. So there we go. We have my document that I've completed. I'm quite happy with all the things I've got on here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close that down. Document. Now, once I've got this in here, as I said earlier, once we start to share and we start to add bits and pieces to it, we may find after a while we have a lot of documents. And this is some documents I've been working on. And there's so many bits and pieces in here. And this is why this tool is a step ahead of many others that are out there. Because trying to find that one sentence or that one task I had can become quite difficult. So I can search through all of these documents. So, for example, if I'm looking at safeguarding, I can just put a keyword in here. Now, this is a, I haven't got it any on safeguarding in this section. But I know I've got a lot on motivation theory. 
Now, what this does, what's really clever, is it doesn't just look for motivation in the title. It will also go through the papers and go, these are papers that discuss that sort of topic, or I've made notes referring to that sort of topic. So here we go. I can click on this paper here. And there we go. This is a paper I downloaded a long time ago, which has those sorts of information in them. Now, I may not have added any notes or annotations on this, but the things are on there. So it's a great way of keeping that document there. Also, filter. And there they are. And this is what I mean by if you want to have certain things for certain elements, maybe you're doing a project, maybe your students are writing a certain project and you want to add tags, it's a great way of quickly cutting things down. <clears throat> now, the next step with something like this, which is really useful, is you've got what's called collections. Because you may have really specific areas. U8002, and I was looking at research methods. So I can take my references here. And say, for example, I want to find another, I had a paper on mixed method research. Uh, I'll, I'll pick anyone really, but I can drag and drop it into these certain folders. And what this does is it then means that I've now got a separate library. It still keeps it in the main one, but it means I then have, I could differentiate very quickly between different sections. This is particularly useful when it comes to the next step that I'm going to look at. Now, the other great thing with Mendeley as well, especially when we're trying to find stuff, I always find that a lot of my students, they'll go online, they won't know what to look for, how to find it. Now, Mendeley actually, with what it does, as people add to their library around the world, it stores them on this document. So I can actually search other people's libraries and other people's documents. So say, for example, I want to look for what files are out there about motivation. I can cut it down by year. <clears throat> this is a lovely paper here. What I can do is this. I can just go, I'll add that to my library. I can then view in library, and that paper is now inputted, there it is, into my academic library, so I can read it at a later stage. It's a great way of instantly searching for different bits and pieces and quickly adding them and sharing them. Particularly useful if we're working with our students. And now, some of you may think, well, how does it fit with my work? Let's say the students are doing, uh, hello, I always use Henry VIII for some reason, I don't know why. But here we go. Some of these aren't always really useful, probably because I've put it in incorrectly. But we can start to find, add to library, add to library, very nice. The other great thing as well with this is, if I put back in motivation, <laughs> say there was one paper here, this was a really, I click related, what it'll do is it'll come up with other papers very similar to it. Really useful again if you're trying to find lots of research very quickly all in one place. So for me, Mendeley is a great tool for adding all of our data all together, keeping it stored, keeping it neat, allowing us not to lose information as we go through. You don't have to always drag and drop as well. You can add manually. You can import a whole library just from the reference. Um, so you can add in PDFs you've already got on your computer, drag and drop them in, and it puts it in there. I've used this as well. Uh, I've got another library, which I use just for work documents, for handbooks, internal work policy, guidance. It's a great way of me keeping everything together for my job. Um, without it being a random folders all over the place. And again, I can just quickly search for it. So if I'm looking for policy for my work setting, I can search for keywords and phrases amongst a whole load of things. So Mendeley is a great way of organizing. 
Now, another great thing that it does, <clears throat> pardon me, it has uh, an app, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, an app that is available at Office 365. So if you go into your Office 365 um, add-ins in the library, so we'll go to references and we'll go to where is it review. It's here somewhere. Insert. Sure, it's going to take a couple of seconds. There it is. Thank you very much. So it is a, an add-in that you can add to your library. So if you do want to add anything in, uh, you can insert and you can add it in that way. But under references, it's got Mendeley's site. Now, what this does is it connects with our library that we have, this library here. And what I can do is say I'm writing a paper, blah, 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 and I want to reference a certain paper. And I want to go, oh, that, that idea came from this paper here. I can tick it, and I can insert that citation. Now, the method of the citation setting may depend on where you are. So I'm using this section here. I want to Harvard, actually, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'll pick the citation I want. Carry on writing. Blah, blah. I can insert another one. Now, again, because I categorized, I can actually then look at the other categories. And this is the great thing about having those catalogs on the very start. So I can go, oh, I'm going to insert that paper there. And I start again. Now, the other benefit of this is once we've written a large chunk, one of the things that I always find quite difficult and a bit of a pain back is getting that bibliography at the end, the reference list. Now, with using Mendeley's site, because it's taken from our library, it's added it in. Once I've put those in-text citations, let's go insert bibliography. And there we go. We've got my complete reference list inserted right at the end, complying with the citation setting that I had set. So that's APA, we've got uh, AMA if you want them. There's Harvard, which is the generic one for a lot of uh, establishments. It's a great way of combining all of our information very quickly. And that's just purely from using Mendeley. If you have any questions about that, uh, or you'd like me to answer anything else about it, please drop it in the chat box. I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you. And then I'll move on to the next section. Okay, thank you very much. So the next tool I wanted to look at, again, it's a, this is a, a, another Microsoft tool. And this is something that I don't feel gets enough love as it should do. And that is Microsoft OneNote. Now, Microsoft OneNote, for those that have never used it before, is a great way of organizing, we'll call this one education revision. <clears throat> And this is something that we're going to look at both in part one and in part two, because I think it's a tool that's really beneficial for a lot of our students, uh, as well as for staff. OneNote in a very simple way is a, think of it as like a notebook with lots of different chapters. And let's think about our students now. So say they're doing a portfolio project. Maybe it's a, a B tech or maybe it's a, a new T level. We've got module one. Let's add another one in, uh, underneath. Call this another page. There we go. New section, we'll call that one. Add a new section, we'll call that one module three. There we go. Now what this we can do with this is, especially as students are working from one to the next to the next as they progress, 
they can use this section here for adding notes. And what it does is it, it combines it all together in a very neat and organized manner. <clears throat> Module one, they may look at a different uh, a range of different things. So we'll give this a name. Say the, the first topic they're looking at is safeguarding. And then the second part of module one, again, see we're just adding page down, just right hand clicking. That's health and safety. And maybe the next part of that project is we're looking at the prevent strategy. And then Maybe the next one is uh, professional ethics, something like that. So what they can do is the students can each week add a little bit in. <clears throat> now, the thing I love with OneNote is the freedom for them to design and share the revision notes in any format that they wish. So for some students, they may just wish to type. Maybe they want to add bullet points. So the uh, new safeguarding. So they can do it any style they want. Again, it just uses the simple, you know, uh, you know. So they can just follow using the, the standard bits and pieces they would have on a normal word. What it also allows them to do, which I think is particularly useful for some students, is they can use audio. So let's say, for example, they want to record a, an idea they have, or maybe they've got a group discussion. All they've got to do is hit audio. And what that's going to do right now, so it finishes here, it's just playing around here. It may not work because I've got the microphone going at the same time. But it will record anything that I talk into it. Again, allowing them this freedom to explore and discuss and share and save their revision notes. For if you've got them in a group dynamic, maybe for example, you're in a staff meeting and you want to share. I'm going to stop it there. It's not going to record for me because I've got the microphone on on this. But once that's done, all they then do is they hit that and they press play. And what that'll do is it'll play that recording for them. So it's a great way of combining lots of different things all on this document. What else can they do? They can add pictures, either from their camera. They can search online. Maybe it's from a file that they've got. They can add the file picture that they've got. Quite a useful tool here. And then they've also got other bits and pieces, such as drawing. Particularly useful. I like the drawing one for me because maybe the, the thought sharing an idea. This is useful if you've got people who use tablet devices. Not so great with the mouse, unless you're really good at using a mouse, I can assure you I'm not. Um, but it's a great way if they want to thought share an idea, or maybe they want to draw a design um, as part of the project. They can also use it to annotate an image. So if, if they put an image on here, they can make annotations, they can make notes. This is all set within certain sections. Again, the great thing is having these separate parts for them to look at allows that differentiation between them. Now, it's not purely just for the written format. Again, I think one of the things that often gets missed when we do any of these digital skills is the idea of how it supports the mathematics. So from a math point of view, it has a couple of different options on here. And OneNote has what's called Math Assistant. Now, it's designed very much the Math Assistant one for those with an iPad or any tablet device, really, because you can write your equation in ink. So say, for example, I do uh, 3x. Oh, see, I told you I'm terrible using a mouse. There we go. And what that will do is, as soon as I've done it, hopefully, it will try to work out what the devil it is that I wrote. Yeah, it's uh, it's not having a great one trying to work out what I'm talking. I'm very neat. But what this allows for is they can add this element in here. It's quite useful uh, if they want to put that in. So I try typing it in. 
you know, it may work a little bit better for me. But if you do have a tablet, you do have a stylus, it's a really great way of uh, putting in different elements because what it will do is it will convert those into the mathematical symbols uh, to help support. Um, we can add things such as forms. So let's say, for example, you're working on a group project. I'm going to look at this in a lot more detail in part two, but we can put different things in there. Say we're organizing a meeting, we want to find out where we are, or maybe we want to get a questionnaire amongst a group of people working on a project. And these are all integrated within OneNote. So it's a great tool for us to have there. The other option with it, I can easily just put in web links. So let's go, so let's say, for example, that's the web link I want. I can go to my OneNote, put an address in, and then that becomes a hyperlink. So I can click on that and we get rid of Math Assistant. And I, that then becomes something that they can click on, they can share, particularly useful, again, if they're doing research projects and they want to share it amongst the group. So it's a really useful tool to be, for people to have. Module two, exactly the same again. We can add lots of different pieces in, very useful. Now, if we go to the, uh, let me just refresh that, <coughs> pardon me. The other thing that we can do with this, it doesn't just do audio recording, but it has what's called immersive reader built into it. Immersive reader is something I've looked at in a lot of detail in the past for some of my sessions. I found it really useful. So up here, you'll see this dictation software. Now, what this will do is it will listen to me as I talk and it will convert it into text. It may not work too well at the moment because I've got the microphone for, for Zoom as well as for this. But it's, again, it's another useful tool to have if we want people to uh, have meetings and discussions or share ideas or maybe they just want to get something off the top of their head. And that's all built in here. So it's not about how fantastic you are at typing. It's a great little thing to have. So OneNote, it's something that I feel we need to use a lot more. I think it's very useful for planning and organization. And we're going to look at how we can use it to collaborate in the uh, second activity in a bit more detail. If you have any questions though, about use of OneNote or anything like that at all, Again, please pop a question in the chat box and I'll be more than happy to answer it. Okay. So Staying with Microsoft, again, this one of the things that um, I want to kind of look at is not just about sharing information, but looking at how do we help organize and plan our time. And I want to look at three tools for helping to organize and plan our time. We've looked at organizing documents and organizing information, but I want to look at three tools, two of which, which I think are really often um, missed when we look at both the Microsoft and the Google packages. So under Microsoft, if you use Office 365, you'll see it under the app launcher, there's something called Microsoft Lists. Now Microsoft Lists, when you see it, we'll start up and we're just going to new list. And what it is, it's a great way of tracking or monitoring progress in a range of different ways. So. If we think of this here, say, for example, we're working on a project uh, as a group, we can put in different tasks, how it's going to be completed, review dates, information, and build from there. They've got these templates that you can use, but we're going to look at starting one from blank. And we're going to call this uh, Revision GCSE Preparation. Uh, Revision timetable or exams. Again, we can give them different ones if we want, those sorts of things. This is going to be something that could be potentially beneficial for our students in the long term. 
So we add along the top here, these different columns. And these different columns can be lots of uh, ways of thinking for us. So let's say the first column, we're gonna put text, and we want this first column to be uh, subject. I can put lots of information in there, but I'm just gonna go subject. I'm going to add another column, which is date and time. And I'm going to say uh, exam date. Help them get prepared for that. I can include a time there as well. And then I can put this another one here. And I'm going to put multiple lines of text. And I'm going to say I'm going to have this one as what elements of the work. Again, you can use any of these along the way. So we've got here a very basic list. And we've just created with headings that are relevant to us. You may be able to think straight away, well, actually, maybe I could use this for a project I'm working on uh, to help me organize it. And we can start to, at the top here, add new items. So what it's done now is it's created my headings along the top in these sections. It's already created this form for me very nicely. So title, uh, we'll call this one, say Monday night homework. Uh, the subject, say it's mathematics. The exam date, or oh, maybe that exam is on the 19th, 12 a.m. And say I need to do a do my trigonometry homework. I need to do... Uh, Pythagoras and let's put a whole number of calculations in some fun. Now I can add attachments here. So add attachments, maybe I've got a worksheet that I need to use, PDF, maybe there's a revision document that my teacher's given me that'll be really useful. I can save these here. And I can also apply labels. So labels are quite useful especially if you build a larger project and you want it to set for certain things in certain areas. Once I've done this, quite happy with that, I can save it. And what it does is it starts building things in so I can build more and more as I go. So let's go Wednesday night homework. This is gonna be my English homework. The exam for this is 21st. And this is Shakespeare because that's what everyone knows. Let's add an attachment just so you can see what it looks like. Say, um, oh, there you go. I've added a PowerPoint on that lesson on Shakespeare. And what this has allowed for is start to build together my work, my week. Really nicely done. Now, the great thing with this is, there we go, it's all saved for me. I can click on different things. I can see what it is I need to do. And we can start to build a profile, particularly useful if you're working on a group project or you're working with a range of different staff. I can edit and make it look in different ways, make it a little bit neater. Absolutely up to you. I can also share different things with different people. So say, for example, I want to share this homework with another colleague. Can't share it with me right now. It's not allowing me to do that. But I can hit that share button and maybe I want to send that homework to somebody else. Oh, this is the slides. I've already got it organized in my neat table for me to look at. <clears throat> when you've got a really large file, you can start to title it, you can start to filter, and you can look through for certain bits and pieces, particularly if you've got loads of different motivations going on right now and the different subject areas. And these are all based on what you've built. So it's a really great tool to have for that. Now, one of the elements I do love with, especially with the Microsoft stuff, and it's something that, in a way, you kind of really need to look at a larger section for, it's something that's called Power Automate. Let me just get rid of filters. Now, Power Automate, for those that haven't used it, is one of uh, Microsoft's latest tools in which if something happens, 
something else will happen. You can organize what the journey is between the two. And I find this particularly useful for maybe reminders on different projects, because what a lot of time will happen is we'll do these plans. They look fantastic. And then we forget about what the plan or what it was. Uh, we don't always know. We don't always realize. But we can do things with, with Power Automate. So what I can do here is I can instantly go set a reminder for that exam date. So what it will do now, because I've got it connected through my Office 365 account, it will send me an email to say, just so you know, you got that exam coming up. It's really useful. Um, what I can do is I can go create a rule. Now, create a rule is if a new item is added or changed, particularly useful if you've got a group of people working on it. Let me just go to setting a new rule. Let's go manage rules. So, say for example, when something changes. So say for example, when an exam date changes, uh, you know, maybe it's altered, I can get it to send an email to me. Really useful if you're working on a big group project together for that. So in a simple sense, this is a great tool that we can use for organizing multiple projects at the same time, organizing information, if we've got files, PDFs, and all those different bits and pieces, particularly useful for both individual and if we're working in a group. Fantastic for that. Uh, if you've got any questions at all uh, about um, use of OneNote or anything that you're unsure on, uh, please drop me a message. Um, in the chat box, and I'm more than happy to go back through it again. That should be hopefully something useful for us. So uh, the final thing, this is what I was kind of looking for, it's under Integrate, under Power Automate. Now, for those that haven't used Power Automate before, we have what's called flows. And we can go create a flow. So create a flow is a journey from one to the other. So let's say, for example, I can ask it to send an email when something occurs or changes. So I can do here, send a customized email. So let's say, for example, I want to have if I've not gone in and ticked off that I've done the work, it sends me an email. So what it's doing right now is telling me what it's connected to. I'm going to create this flow. So right now, what it's done, it's sending me a customized email when something else is added. Really useful. But can I add anything else to it? Let's say, for example, I want to add something else to it. I'm going to go to edit. I can alter what is in that. So at the moment, when a new item is created and when a new item is added to my list, it sends me an email. Now, what we can do is we can also, using the AI software that's in with Power Automate, I can ask it to do other things. So when a date is two days over and not completed task please send a follow-up email to my address now this is a really great new feature they've brought in because originally power automate was a little bit difficult to kind of get around but it was a great way what it will do now fantastic it's now created a new flow for me. So it's understanding if I've not updated my organization list or maybe something's not been completed on a task or maybe someone's not completed something, it will update and send me an email to my address. And that's done that automatically for me. When I'm happy, all I do is I save that. It's not liking it because I've not connected it up to my email address but it will send me that email. 
And that's a great feature that you get with office ones uh, and not always with the others, which we're going to look at later on. Any questions at all on that, again, put them in the chat box. Happy to help. Okay. Now, for some of you, you don't use Office, and I understand that. So what I wanted to look at was what's the alternative for Google? What's available on Hub? And for this, we have what's called Google Keep. Google Keep, for those that haven't used it before, it's uh, very similar in terms of it's an organization tool, uh, great for project management, uh, and it is designed for you to do on your computer, but it's something that's also uh, fits quite well with mobile phone device that many have. So this is particularly useful when we're working with students uh, doing work projects, they can sync it to their mobile phone so they know what they've got going on. Now with something like Google Keep, what it does is it adds a note. And it's a series of notes that they can add to different elements. So let's add a new label in here. So we'll go edit label. Let's say this is uh, English revision. We'll hit done. So we've got a new little section here for English revision. And then we can add different notes in. Uh, read Shakespeare section. And they can add different elements in here. So say it's uh, chapter three, verse two. Maybe they want to put a picture in there. Maybe they want to um, add other bits and pieces, a drawing, a label. Maybe they want to copy it to Google Docs in which it can be added to another work file they've got there. They can also add in reminders. So this is particularly useful if it's a piece of work that they need to complete by a set date it will send a reminder. This is why it's quite good with how it links with a mobile phone device, because if they do this work task, if they do this revision, you work with them, it's something that keeps help keeps on track. Now, what we've done here, we're going to build a series of notes. So let's look at, say, uh, it's, I don't know, someone's birthday. So it doesn't just have to be for work stuff. Let's put it as a different color because it's someone's birthday. There we go. We'll put a date in here. So I remember today. There we go. Fantastic. Let's add another note in here. Let's work to We can add other bits and pieces in, and we can start to play around with it. Now, with each of these, you can keep them on one screen, but what you'll eventually get is a long list of them. But having these labels down the left-hand side means that actually, maybe I want to have a label on here which is for personal reminders, and I can just drag. Uh, what I can do is go into here. I can add a label. And I can tick which box it is. Read Shakespeare, add a label. That's my English revision homework. This one here, yeah, I'm going to add a label, and that's going to say that will go under my that may go under my mathematics homework or something like that. But it's a great way of organising and planning and, and that structure. It doesn't just have to be written prose. We can also have lists, but particularly useful if we're adding uh, a range of tasks that need to be done. This is a group project. Uh, we've got to uh, find the website. Say we've got a uh, design color scheme. Other bits and pieces. And the great thing with this, it means that as you do it, you can just tick it off as you go. So it's a great way of them organizing their time effectively and this is something again add a label you put it into a different section really nice way if they're an ipad user uh, or they use a stylus very much like with one note what we noticed earlier they can draw it on as well so it doesn't just have to be um a 
um, kind of written, say, for example, they want to design a, a project they're doing, if it's an ET project or a food tech project or something, uh, they can have all these different bits here. It's a quite a nice way of uh, doing those sorts of things. We're happy with that. There we go, fantastic. Nine for the box. There we go. So we've got that there. So it doesn't just have to be text. And I think that's one of the great things with this. Let me just think I've got my dog. Wanting to involve himself. So Google Keep is a great way of using all the features we've discussed so far for those who use the Google or the Hub software that's available. Uh, if you're not happy with something, once you've got uh, done with it, let's say, for example, we'll go to our project here. If I want to get rid of it, what I can do is it doesn't delete it. What it does is it archives it. So if I go to uh, this section here, I can archive it. What it does is it just stores it in this little bin here. So if I do need to go back and look at anything, I can go look back at any of my work that I've done previously or any questions I may have had. Really useful tool. Again, any questions on Google Keep, please drop them in the chat box. I'd be happy to answer those. Now, I know for some of you may use Microsoft, you may use Google, or you may not use any of them. So the final one that I want to look at tonight is uh, called Trello. Now, Trello uses all of the fundamental features that we've looked at with Microsoft Lists and with Google Keep. And if you're a place which wishes to use a third-party software such as this, I really do rate Trello. Trello, in a very simple sense, it is free to use, and we can go and we can create a board from the start. So we'll give this a title. Let's call it uh, Organization Plan. If I can spell correctly, and I can go. Now you can have up to 10 boards for free. I can assure you that's well enough. And we're going to start with a very basic plan that we've got here. So I'm going to call this uh, to do. I'm going to have another one which is called uh, doing. And I'm going to have one. There we go. And I may want to just have this one as reference material. Now, this is what this does here is I've added these titles underneath, but we're going to now we can start to formulate lots of different projects underneath. Particularly useful when we're looking at taking on lots of different things all at once. So let's say, for example, I'm doing uh, I've got a an English class to prep for. Uh, maths class. I've got a um, school PTA meeting, and uh, maybe I've got a school governors meeting, and then I've got another project which is a um, ESL meeting, something like that. Now, with each of these, what I can do as I move through, you can actually move these along. It's a great achievement of different tasks as we work through. Now, the most important element with these is how that I really like with Trello. We don't see so much with Google Keep or with Google Lists. So if I just click on my English class, there we go. What it's done is it's opened that card up to a lot more different elements. So I can add a more detailed description in here. Say, for example, I've got to go uh, plan the lesson on uh, Shakespeare. Again, you would add a lot more detail than what I would add. 
I can also add links to different things. So say, for example, I've got that web link from earlier. Uh, I can add an image. Say I've got an image from a computer that I want to add to it. I can also embed certain files as well. Uh, or I can add other people. Or I can add larger documents to this. So if I go back here, I can add, there we go. I've now added a PowerPoint to my list. Save that. There we go. Lovely. So I'm starting to build my lesson all in one little section here. I can also add checklist of things to do. So we'll give this a title. This organization. And I can put different things I need to do there. So proof three slides. Uh, a lot more things. And with each of these, what I can do is I can assign uh, dates for when it's going to be due. Unfortunately, with this one, with the, the free package, you have to pay for it. This is where, again, using Microsoft Lists and Power Automate, it's completely free, that section. But if you don't have access to them, this is a really great way of doing it. And then once I'm happy with that, I could close. So if that's something I'm working on right now. I can now see documents, the text, I can see that there's four checklist items that I need to do. As I go through, again, I can add this one, I can add labels to it. So say, for example, I want to have this as my green label, because my green label is maths. Give it a label. Go. And I can start to really see how my class is moving. And as things get done, I can go through, work on what I see, and I can add elements down here. You can have multiple different boards at once. So I've got a number of boards that I've got going. So if I go to workspaces, go back to ones that I've worked with previously, I can choose those and I can move around them. So it's a really great way It's my weekly schedule one. So these are things I'm working on at the moment that I've done. Other ones I'm doing, other ones I've done. There's some ideas I've got at the moment, uh, which I'm working on uh, for something different. But it's a really great way of organizing our documents and our time. Uh, and particularly useful again for our students who are visual and want to see the, the success they've had. Hopefully, that has not been too much of a whistle stop talk. And hopefully, it has kind of got some ideas coming through that are really going to benefit you. Again, many apologies for my uh, voice this evening. And hopefully that made sense and was of benefit to you. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. Uh, but I hope to uh, see you very soon for part two, where we'll take a lot of these ideas and look at how we expand it. But only looking at in a collaborative working environment, how we get our students to share and collaborate together. Thank you so much for this evening. And I will speak to you all later on. Thank you.